In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at some of the options for tracing, zooming and scaling on the Casio FX CG50. For more tutorials on this calculator, visit parkermaths.com forward slash CG50. So before you start this tutorial, you need to know how to plot a graph on your graphical calculator. It's also helpful if you've got some experience of using the view window. If you're not sure how to do either of those things, you might want to first consider checking out the tutorials on them. First of all, we enter graph mode by pressing five. We're going to enter our function. For this example, we're going to use x sine x. Don't worry if you don't know what this function looks like. You'll find out in a minute when we plot the graph. First of all, let's just see what it looks like if we don't change any of the axis settings. If you're trying this along with me and yours looks different, there's a couple of reasons that might be. First of all, I'm in degrees mode, and secondly, you may have different settings in your view window. So we're going to open the view window by pressing F3. And my values here are from the initial preset. I'm going to change to the trig preset by pressing F2. Let's see what the graph looks like now by pressing exit and exe. The range of X values now looks a little bit more sensible, but we can clearly see the graph is going off the screen at the top and the bottom. Now we could try and adjust the Y values manually in V window, but often it's worth first trying one of the zoom functions. I'm going to press zoom, which is F2, and then I'm going to choose the auto zoom, which is F5. In this case, it's nicely sorted out the Y scale for me so that I can see much more of the graph. In general, the auto zoom is good at getting the minima and maxima to fit on the screen. However, don't expect it to always work, so it's important to make sure you know how to manually adjust your view window settings. Next up, I'd like to look at the trace function, which I get to using F1. The trace function allows me to find X and Y values on the curve. So by pressing F1, I've now got a crosshair that's appeared on the curve. I can use the left and right arrows to cycle through points on the curve, which are displayed at the bottom of the screen. One of the limitations of trace is that it doesn't let you choose the X values. You just have to go with, with the ones it lets you see. Later in the G-Solve tutorial, I'll show you how you can actually choose X or Y values and let the calculator figure out the other value for you. When you've finished with the trace function, press F1. Next, we'll look at moving the graph window so you can see different parts of the graph. In graph view, if I don't have any of the functions selected and I press one of the directional arrows, I can move about and see different parts of the graph. This can be useful if you want to just make slight adjustments on what you can see on the screen. I can also zoom in by pressing F2 to zoom and then F3 for in. However, it doesn't zoom straight away, it brings up a crosshair. You then can move that crosshair to wherever you would like the center of your new zoom to be. When you're happy with where you've chosen, press EXE. In a similar way, I can zoom out by pressing F2 and then F4. I still have to choose a center point for when I've zoomed out as well. The final method I'm going to show you for zooming, which is my personal favorite, is to use the box zoom. We press F2 and then F1 for box. Box zoom allows us to draw a box around the region we want to zoom into. We first move our crosshair to one of the corners of our box and press EXE. Then we move our crosshair to a second position, which will be the other corner of the box. This pink box is what's going to be shown on my screen when I press EXE. And so by using a combination of those zoom methods along with the view window, you have lots of control over precisely which part of the graph you'd like to have on your screen. 